So I have a really good friend of mine named Sam, lives up in Washington State, and he's an aerospace engineer. He loves airplanes, builds airplanes, designs airplanes. His whole life is airplanes. So we bought him some pictures of some like blueprint looking airplanes uh, for Christmas and I figured it'd be a great idea instead of just putting them in an old cheap Walmart frame, I could build some frames with my brand new table saw and uh, give them to him for Christmas. So that's what this video is all about. So a brand new table saw. This will be my first project. And you're going to have to excuse the look of the shop slash two car garage in this video build because again brand new saw and I couldn't wait to use it so I went ahead and set it up and got right to cooking all right so here um, off camera before I got to this point I took a red oak one by three and ripped it right down the middle so I have two identical pieces and I figured instead of having just a square stock for the frame I wanted to have a 45 chamfer on each side of the front of the frame just to kind of give it a little bit of a profile and just a little, make it a little bit more interesting. So that's what I'm doing here. I set the blade to 45 and I'll just run this uh, piece of stock through the saw on both sides to kind of give it that chamfer on the front. Oh, and also you'll notice that I don't have dust collection set up with my saw yet. And I know that's kind of a bad thing. But again, I couldn't wait to set it up. I couldn't wait to use it. So anyway, gosh, I really need to clean this garage. All right, so I ran it all the way through there and then I flipped it around, ran it all the way through on the other side and this is what we're left with. Kind of a double chamfer profiled piece. All right, so after I did that, I wanted to go ahead and cut a rabbit in the back of the frame. So I had to get the blade back to 90. Got one of these nifty little Wixie digital scales, gauges, whatever you want to call it. I don't quite trust it yet, so I always kind of check it for, for 90 with a uh, machinist square. Once I got that set up, uh, I got this set of Rockler setup blocks from my wife for Christmas, and they're awesome. I love them. They make setup a breeze. So I took the 3 8 out, and here you'll see me set up the blade to 3 8 of an inch high. Because that's how deep I wanted the rabbit to come into the back of the frame. And this will create the inset for the artwork and the glass, of course. And then because I wanted a 3 8, 3 8 inch uh, reveal to be left on the front, I took a quarter inch and set it on the right side of the blade because there's an eighth inch kerf on the blade. And once I make that cut, it'll leave me with three eighths on the front. So that's what I'm doing here is, is getting that part set up. And don't worry, the saw was off while I was touching the blade. All right, so I went back, grabbed the piece that's got the chamfer and the chamfer is towards the fence because this is gonna be a rabbit on the back of the frame. So I'll make my initial cut here, which as you can see, leaves 3 eighths of an inch on the front side. I'll run this through all the way. And then I'll end up standing up the frame stock on the top, or on the back rather, and then finish cutting that rabbit off. So off camera, I measured the height of that rabbit from the back of the frame, three quarters of an inch. So I went ahead and grabbed the three quarter inch setup block, raised the blade to that height, and then I'll come back and cut the remainder of that rabbit off the back of the frame. And you'll notice I've got a little bit of a play 
in the zero clearance phenolic plate there. So I've got to figure that out. Maybe adjust some of the set screws or something. But uh, anyway, so I'm running it all the way through here and cutting off the remainder of that rabbit. And what I'll be left with is uh, a stock that I can, from which I can cut the frame and it'll have the necessary rabbit in the back left so that it will accept the artwork and the glass. And here you go. 3 eighths on the front, 3 eighths in the back. Just a little bit of a profile on those chamfers. Easy peasy. All right, so that was a quick shot of my frame cutting sled that I built. Um, shout out to David Picciuto and Michael Alm. I'll link both of their profiles below, but I kind of got the idea for this frame sled from them. It's kind of a hybrid approach of the ones that each of them built. So here I'm just setting up the left side first and I'll cut a 45 miter on the frame. And so the way this frame jig is set up, that stop block on the other side I'm about to use measures the inside of the rabbit or the size of your artwork so with the actual foam board and the mat surrounding the art it was like 15 and a quarter by like 12 and a quarter so I have the stop block set to 15 and 3 8 which will give me a little bit of play around the artwork so it can contract you know breathe a little bit he's up in Northwest and I'm sure humidity will play or have a little bit of an impact on the art. So I went ahead and finished cutting all of the pieces for each frame and there were four pictures in all so I had to cut enough pieces for each picture. Sixteen in total for all you math geniuses out there. And then after I cut them all, I had to bring them over to my makeshift assembly table here, which of course is just a fold out plastic table because my garage slash shop is a total mess. And so I'm gonna use the painter's tape method to glue this up. Quite honestly, that's all the clamping capability you really need. So I just take out a piece of painter's tape and you make sure that you have alternating short and long pieces since it's a rectangular frame. And then you glue each of them down. There I am checking to make sure I got the right piece. You tape all of them down. And then I'll basically fold it up on itself to make sure all of the gaps are correct. And then we'll glue it up. So here I am checking just to kind of make sure, all right, everything's gonna work out, everything looks good. And I'm happy with it. Looks good. All the miters came out well. Nice and 90 degrees. No gaps. Looks good. All right. So once I'm happy with that, I go back and decide to glue it up. Just open it back up. just going to use my finger. Of course you could use a silicone brush. I have one somewhere, but <laughs> I can't find it in this garage. It's ridiculous. So I just use my finger, spread the glue in, in all of these miters here. And then when I'm done gluing it up, we'll fold it up and let that dry. And as I fold it up, I just kind of like to make sure, okay, everything's lining up well. One piece is not in front of the other, so to speak. And that's it. Tape off the end. And you could always go back and put a piece of tape on the front or the back to just kind of help strengthen that clamping force of the tape. But I don't think it's necessary. All right, so while that uh, frame is drying up, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the spline pieces that are gonna go into those miters. 
here in a little bit. So I get the table saw set up to cut the splines and there's multiple ways to do this. The way I chose to do it was using this thin rip jig from Rockler. And again, there's probably multiple ways to set this up. I've seen Michael Alm take the actual spline cut in the frame, set it on the jig itself and measure it. That way, I just used a setup block because I know I have an eighth inch curved blade and I used the bearing on the thin rip jig and butted it up against an eighth inch setup block that was butted up against the blade and it worked. And so here I am just kind of checking to make sure that once I make this cut, I'll have an eighth inch spline. So grab a push stick and take the little piece of scrap here of oak and cut the splines. And again, the play in that phenolic plate is really messing with me because the piece that I'm pushing through is getting stuck in the back end there and I'm not able to push it all the way through. So I need to fix that. So with this jig, all I got to do is bring the fence back towards the workpiece. And once it hits the jig, we know we're going to have another eighth inch spline. And here I did the same thing. I brought the fence over and I was about to cut it and I realized mm, it's a little close to that fence for me. Probably would have been okay, but it's brand new. It's the first project. I ain't trying to mess it up. So I went and grabbed a piece of plywood to use as a sacrificial fence. And as you see in the back there, I clamped it up, reset and cut the last spline. Gosh, I got to fix that. It's driving me crazy even just watching it. All right, so I cut all the splines. And here I am trying to show you that um, spline, but uh, camera's a little out of focus, but it's okay. So I came back the next day ready to make the spline cuts in the miters of the frame. So I pulled out this spline cut jig that I made. Also, another shout out to Dave Picciuto because I got the idea for this one from his channel. So here I am setting the blade to the height of the spline cut into the frame because I don't want it to come into the opening of the frame. I want to stop just short of that. And then I just kind of eyeball it into the middle of the frame here. And once I got it all set up, I just make a spline cut in all four corners of the frame. Just kind of rotate it around until all four sides are complete. And just like that, you're done. So I did that to all four frames. And then I like to just double check that the splines will fit okay and what do you know they do perfect and you don't want it to be too tight but you don't want it to be too loose either because the glue will make it swell and that'll snug it up and then of course the glue will hold then i take the splines that i cut the day before on the table saw over to the miter saw here so i can cut them into smaller pieces since i don't have a band saw this is the way i'm doing it And as the spline itself got closer and closer to the blade, I did end up getting another piece of wood to use as a hold down so my fingers didn't get too close to the blade. And then once all of the smaller spline pieces were cut, time to glue up. And I noticed after watching this video that I glued the splines in the wrong way. As you can see, I'll insert the end grain of the spline into that cut, and I'd rather have it rotated 90 degrees to where the long grain of the spline is inserted into the cut. It's just a stronger joint that way, but it's okay. I only did it on this one frame. The other three I actually did correctly. But again, it's a picture frame. It's not going to be under a huge amount of stress. So I'm not too worried about it. It's going to be okay. So go ahead and finish gluing in all of the splines. 
and then I'll set it off to the side to dry. And I'll come back, cut those and sand it, and it'll be ready for finish. And because nobody wants to sit here and watch me sand four frames over and over and over again, I'll go ahead and speed this part up. But I started with 80 grit and I worked my way up through 220 and sand four frames so they'd be ready for finish. All right, so then I set those to the side and uh, I grabbed a sheet of uh, acrylic plexiglass that I got from one of the big box stores. And I did off camera before doing this, switch out the blade to an 180 tooth plywood slash OSB blade. I did not put it on backwards. I left it on the normal way and it cut through this acrylic like butter. So I went ahead and measured out the inside of the frames, made sure I had all my measurements correct and uh, cut the plastic. And you can see here I had to actually reposition because I ran into the tripod with the out feed there. Switched it around, ran it through, and cut the other three, or cut all four of them rather. And just so you believe me, I'll show you changing out the blade here again. So there's the 180 tooth. Uh, it's just a cheap uh, Craftsman blade that I got from Lowe's. And it cut that acrylic, no problem. Then I put the uh, regular 40 tooth blade back in there. It's just my standard combo blade that came with the saw because I haven't upgraded to a woodworker two yet. Um, but uh, that's coming soon. And then because it is a saw stop, I go ahead and check the spacing on the break in the blade every time I do a blade change, which is what I'm doing there with that little yellow plastic piece that comes with the saw. And that just makes sure that the uh, break does not activate when it shouldn't, but does when it should. All right, so I forgot to film my spraying of the frame. So this is a dramatic reenactment of what it looked like when I did. And I used this lacquer and a rattle can. Um, I used it on a couple of nightstands that I built for my wife and I, and it worked great. And they've lasted really well. They've been holding strong for a few years. So I went ahead and went with that. I was gonna do India ink and general finishes uh, armor seal, but I didn't have access to the general finishes. So I went with the rattle can option instead. Anyway, here I am, I uh, got the uh, plastic taken off the protective film and I bought this PlexiClean here, specifically formulated to clean plexiglass and acrylic. Normal glass cleaners can scratch, so I highly advise you to use this. And I just threw a couple of shop tiles down so I didn't scratch as I flipped it over. So I cleaned all of the uh, sheets of plastic and grabbed the frame after they were done drying and dropped them right in. And then I uh, took the air compressor and just kind of blasted it with a little bit of air to make sure there wasn't any dust in there. I'll do the same thing to the artwork. And then it's really as simple as dropping it in. And then I'm going to pick it up and just check to make sure before I close everything up that there's not any dust trapped in there. And once I'm happy with it, flip it back over and I grabbed this uh, point gun that I bought from uh, one of the craft stores here in town. And uh, this thing is really awesome actually. And uh, that's hard oak and it drove it in no problem. And then you're really done. From there it's, you could leave it or you could add a couple of strips of brown paper around the edges on the back to make sure uh, to act as a dust cover, uh, which I will do before shipping it off to my friend Sam. And uh, here is the glamour shot of the finished product. And the other couple of pictures are just some frames that I built for my mom uh, for these silhouettes that my sister-in-law got her for Christmas and uh, my brother and I built the frames and uh, finished framing them up. And that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed it. 
my very first video and uh, more to come.